ID is okay. Let's uh, entering the ID and. You can see here that I, I have opened uh, my uh, slides from the atlas, and this is just over, overlapping uh, the, the brain flow uh, image that I want to map to the atlas. So now I can launch a big warp. I can run it here, and I would like to select as moving sources uh, the three channels from my brain through a recent image. So these are these three. And as fixed sources, I will select the, uh, the, the, the brain slides from the atlas. So the two channels corresponding to this uh, image. So let's select OK. And now I can minimize this window. And I have the two different images opened uh, with Big Warp. So if I want to map those two, I will, I will begin by uh, uh, selecting different uh, landmarks. So I just open the landmark mode and I will uh, select four different uh, landmarks, uh, one each, each uh, quarter uh, to have uh, like um, yeah, uh, 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 begin the beginning of my uh, warping here. So with these four points here, I can go back to my fixed image and I can uh, press F to have the fused mode. So now the two images are overlapping and then I will transform uh, my moving source so the, the the fluorescent uh, VSI file to the atlas by pressing uh, T. So now I have transformed uh, roughly my image and I can add uh, more points to fi fine tune uh, this mapping. So if I quit the landmark mode, I, I can scroll and I can, uh, here we can see uh, again, the, the lazy loading of the different multi-resolution levels, but I can also adjust and fine tune my uh, mapping. So let's select this point, move the source uh, like I want to uh, align it a bit, scroll back and move those four points. So this is kind of okay. And if I want, I can add as much points as possible. So with control click, here I have one more point and I can drag and drop it again to adjust and fine tune uh, my mapping. So yeah, I could uh, work uh, much more on that to get a satisfactory results for the mapping. But this is uh, the idea. Uh, I hope you had you have uh, an uh, an idea of uh, what we could reach and what we could uh, manage to do with this connector uh, if we had uh, something similar, for example, for big, big texture and etc. So I will just uh, quit the demo here, and I have a few more slides uh for uh, talking about the next steps so uh the the different ideas that we have in mind for the next uh, steps would be uh okay we are considering uh, on how to save uh, these big world transformation we would like to save them as uh, json files and uh, for example link uh, those json uh, files to the original image in omero so that uh, if someone opens uh, the image uh, again with big data viewer then uh, the, the 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 transformation with the big warp would be saved and uh, automatically uh, the images uh, would be loaded uh, back uh, with the transformation 
And also we would like to make this connector work with uh, other plugins of Fiji, uh, especially big stitcher, like I just said. So for that, we still need to, to know how to access uh, the stage X and Y position metadata from the uh, Omero API. And uh, basically with that, we could make, uh, make this connector work with big stitcher as well. And then another thing we have in mind uh, would be to develop uh, an Omero QPass connector uh, working on raw pixel data because uh, the current Omero QPass connector uh, works uh, with the web API and this is uh, this works on um, rendered data. So we, we, th we are thinking, we are co considering to use uh, the same raw pixel stores from the Omero API uh, to develop uh, another connector uh, with QPass. So that's basically it for my demo. It was a very short demo, but if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. And also I just, uh, put the, the link to the GitHub. Uh, if you want to uh, have a look, uh, feel free. Uh, I can send it into the chat. Maybe this would be more convenient. And yeah, feel free for questions. <laughs> Amazing demo. Uh, thanks a lot. That is really, really impressive. Uh, all the lazy loading and all of that natively in image shade. That is, uh, that's very cool. Um, just a very brief, I don't know, remark question uh, for the, for the QPA. QPath connector, I guess you talked to Pete, um, right? Yeah, so, this is yeah. already a discussion that uh, starts on the image SC forum. So okay. yeah, Pete already yeah. Uh, answered to that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Because uh, Pete, Pete was actually addressing us, I don't know, like roughly half a year ago. Um, yeah. Where he connected us with, uh, with one person. I'm sorry, I'm very bad with names when I see people only once. Melvin. Like, Melvin, yeah, right. And we yeah. had a brief, uh, like, I mean, you know, a Q and A session where he was asking us how we we're using Omero because he didn't. I mean, he, he knew it, but he didn't know it from how it, it's used in, in a real world scenario. So mm -hmm. they are actively uh, working on on their side as well. But as you said, they're not using the raw uh, the raw pixel access. They're using the the web API. Um, yeah. So there is somebody uh, doing stuff on this. Um, but since you're in contact, that's all good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, another question, yeah, Julio, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, um, thank you for it. It's, it's great to see it. It's nice. Uh, and I totally agree with what you said that actually you have to provide users with this kind of tools to somehow initially convince them to to use Romero. Yeah. It's not yeah. always. It's not always obvious. So I was wondering, would it make sense in this tool like this uh, Atlas? Mm -hmm uh save the the regions uh that you detect as ROIs in the original image mm -hmm. let's say transform back the atlas to what the image the raw data is and drop them as as ROIs yeah that would be the the plan for sure yeah okay. uh, but uh, we <laughs> we have uh, many no, no, it was. Work. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and that, yeah. <laughs> way, I was just thinking if if that's if that makes sense. I because we have some users that have this kind of uh, these images and they they draw by hand actually these ROIs. Okay, for the atlas, but yeah. For um, yeah, I mean they don't use an atlas. They just look at the images and then they draw the ROI and then by hand they save that into a mirror and then we run the analysis mm -hmm. on those ROIs. But I would say if there would be something that would, I mean, it's not automatic, but it would somehow ease the, the drawing of the ROIs. And at the same time that they draw the hippocampus, they draw also all other ROIs. And so that would be mm -hmm. somehow a way to standardize things that would be, I think yeah, that would be sure, of yeah. some value for them and for us that we get nice ROIs to do the image analysis and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, and also one of my colleagues at the Biop has developed uh, a tool uh, for mapping uh, brain slices uh, with the uh, Atlas, so an automatic tool uh, called ah, yeah, ABBA. So. 
Uh, and for sure, our idea uh, here is to integrate everything uh, mm -hmm. with Omero, and uh, we would like to have a whole pipeline and to, to get everything uh, uh, stored in uh, and gather at the same place, place uh, in Omero. Uh, but yeah, uh, so That's great. For, for sure, if we stop here, this uh, doesn't help uh, really, no, no, it doesn't it really help people. <laughs> Yeah. for uh, yeah, adopting a very but, but, but it's very good to see the potential of this uh, of these tools okay thank you are there maybe other questions i have just a technical question remark maybe you noticed i sorry i started to record because yeah. i thought that might be your omission in the in the heat of the stress thank you for being the first demo yeah for yeah. sure i'm really sorry i just no 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 problem <laughs> no problem to, to of course of course me. i should have pressed the button earlier so you are fine with that being recorded and uh, no problem yeah that's excellent totally thank you yeah <laughs> But presenting and recording and everything, yeah, uh, I'm not really uh, comfortable with doing all the technical stuff. Uh, uh, thank you for, for being so proficient and very nice demo. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so kudos from my side as well. So um, I think we've all been wanting to play more with BDV. So this uh, basically makes that possible now. Um, so just two thoughts from my side. So it's, I don't have any it probably takes a little more discussion um, and maybe there'll be some more applications that come up this week. Um, the burden on the user of always typing in the ID of their image just seems um, like something we should get over as a community. So the mm -hmm. only thing I could think of like watching your, your presentation is maybe we could just put in the URL mm -hmm. and just make that work, you know, and so it, that your image always is the URL and you don't really need to know that the last few digits are the ID or yeah. whatever. And you don't need to type in the server and you don't need to type in the port. You know, we're not set up for that. You know, you did exactly what everyone else has to do at the moment, but it seems like we can make that more friendly. So that's yeah. just mm -hmm. one thing that would be nice. And then it would only be URL and then your password. And maybe we could even, you know, redirect the user to the browser to log in. So mm -hmm. that's something to think about. Yeah, and definitely, is, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the other is, I'm pretty sure there's been a, a conversation started about storing the big warp transforms in the NGFF. Um, I'll have to double check on that. I, okay. Maybe, maybe that was, okay, so it wasn't you. So I was thinking, well, maybe it was Claire who had said it, but then it's someone else. No, definitely it's not me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that would be awesome. And then have everything kind of tied together as one package, you know, you would yeah, have, for sure. have all that online. So that would be beautiful. <laughs> so how do you, how, 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 how do you feel about it? Like, I mean, are you ready for all these people who are watching to start using it? <laughs> no, yeah, no worries, but uh, they may have to uh, <laughs> to wait a bit for 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 the tool to be uh, ready. <laughs> and then at the moment, it's a you download the jar yourself into Fiji, or is there an update site? No, there are absolutely nothing. Uh, this is uh, just a. Uh... Uh, yeah, I'm running this uh, from IntelliJ, uh, so I'm creating an, an instance of uh, Fiji, uh, but yeah, we will definitely consider uh, as soon as we have, uh, uh, I would say, comprehensive uh, and kind of uh, fin not finished, but yeah, comprehensive uh, version of it, uh, we will consider to, to make an update site and make it available from Fiji, yeah, for sure. Very cool. We still have about seven more minutes if anyone wants to just dive in. Pierre, I think, or I can't. Yes, sorry, just a quick question. It may not be as much to Claire as to you uh, uh, about update sites. It's just that if uh, Claire were to set up an update site, uh, how would that, uh, uh, it's mostly an image question, I, uh, a fetch question, I figure, but uh, how um, would that uh, 
work with uh, an inside uh, plugin uh, setup by the user uh, on the same uh, Fiji instance. Uh, is there any conflict? Uh, or... I mean, well, I don't know yet. It, it should be possible to to use the same chain of jars so that you know the the um, the insight plugin and the BDB plugin can happily live together. We should test it out. You know, should we should make sure that works. Um, and the only tricky part, and there's not really a solution for that, would be it would only. I don't think any of you are on an Omero that's that old, but you know there have been times in the past where you had to have separate plugins for different Omeros, so that would be the only thing that would be tricky. But just getting those two plugins to work together shouldn't be tricky. I guess you're mentioning us, right? I I I didn't look at anyone. I just I just. I think Laurent, you have your end up. Yeah, sorry. Um, very nice demo. Um, I just had a question. How? I mean, you, you talked about the next steps that you're thinking and that you want to go through. Um, how difficult would it be to go for a big volume viewer as well? Um... You know, there's a lot of things because I, I mean, I don't know exactly what's the difference in the background between those two, right? But, I'm uh, yeah. I'm not really comfortable either with the difference. Uh, yeah, that could. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, okay. Or... No, I'm just I'm just thinking that because from um, a user perspective, the, yeah. um, I mean, whenever you convert things to XML, uh, H5 uh, for big data viewer, you can also use big volume viewer. Uh -huh. So. Yeah. Um, but once again, I don't know how you do the linking between the Omero and and the, and the plugin. So I don't know how much work it would be for a big volume viewer. I mean, yeah, the quite of the work would be to to get uh, uh, used to you with a big volume viewer. Uh, so how this is uh, implemented? Because uh, yeah, I have no experience with that, so I cannot tell. Maybe Nico, you have something to add on this. Unfortunately not, so I have a <laughs> question. If you want to comment okay. on this third, I, I will shut up right now. Otherwise, I will ask mine. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just uh, just going in the same direction or picking up what Josh said with uh, with typing in the, o, the, the Omero ID. Um, mm -hmm. It might be worth um, investigating in the direction of the, you know, the other Fiji Omero plugin, the one from Allison and, mm -hmm. and Curtis. Which is kind of in a um, sleep right now, uh, but I do remember from a demo uh, feels like ages ago, probably three years, two years ago, that it already has a tree view and things like that. So um, and it's okay. in that sense um, slimmer in terms of appearance on the screen because if you open the inside uh, mm -hmm. plugin, you have like half of the screen already taken. <laughs> um, and uh, I think this one has an option to just uh, visualize the screen or something like that. But I might be wrong. Josh probably knows much more about it. No, I, I think that's true. So um, as a heads up, so there's kind of a, a, a distributed Fiji hackathon going on throughout the summer. I can send information around to everyone. I wanted to bring it up for NGFF anyway. Um, and one of the things Curtis did want to work on is getting the ImageJ Omero plugin working again. There's a some small bug. Um, so when, when that happens, then I think we can start reevaluating all those. At the moment, you know, it's, mm. it can't be installed. Um, but yeah, and in general, you know, we, we, we need to make these things as reusable as possible. So, you know, that they're not everyone's rebuilding their entire plugin from scratch. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially since not right now, in our experience, it takes a lot of boilerplate code if you want to automate things in Fiji scripting languages, no matter which one, um, to just fetch uh, stuff from Omero and get it back. So easing this uh, would probably be one entry point to attract more people um, to using Omero, because if it's more streamlined to, to run the analysis, that's uh, well, just attractive. Just maybe a small comment on that uh, is because I I believe that uh, Omero is not accessible through the macro language of uh, 
Yeah, someone would have to write a plugin that knows macro language and then it would be accessible. Yeah, okay. Because that's, in our facility, it's one of the, well, it's, so to say, one of the blocking points because there is a lot of people doing macro language. The, and Is Jerome yeah. in here? Mm -hmm. I was just going to check if Jerome's in here because then maybe magically such a plugin will show up tomorrow. Uh, I, have, I have the feeling every time you that ask. That would be good. No, no, he's not here. Oh, just just check on his GitHub site. He might have it. Okay. Already. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, no, it, just I, I mean, I always try to tell them, yeah, but maybe you should go out of the macro language and do something a bit more. Yeah, that, that those are the limits of the macro language. I, I always tell them, but it's true that there's a lot of, how they say, uh, yeah, a lot of things that are already done and people don't like to move too much once they know the macro language. But maybe what one possibility here would be, so somebody would have to write a script that uh, takes as an input, for example, the ID of an image or the URL, depending on, on the way you do it. Mm. And from the macro language, there's a run macro or run, I don't remember exactly what it's called. There's a common that runs a script. Run script. Well, yeah. uh, in, uh, sorry, in fact, sorry to jump in. In fact, we do have this example. If you go to Omero Guides, I can show you the uh, the particular point. There is exactly, I think, what Laura is describing. You have uh, you have a groovy script which has a point, in, a line in, in itself, which says IJ uh, whatever, and it can consume uh, a macro attached as an attachment uh, to as a text attachment to, let's say, an image in Omero. So uh, yeah, of course it's not what you mean exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you that's mean something nicer, yeah. but uh, yeah, something say. that they can run locally. Actually, that's they that can they can, they can they run can, yeah. the script locally. Yeah, uh, right. It's just it's just some thinking step needs to be done there. They can yeah. take that script as a as a template, the script I just mentioned, the groovy one, yeah. and then insert their macros into that. Yeah. I think it's a matter of, of, of user experience. Like, what is the, the biologist that managed to write a macro after a training for analysis in his not very big data, like his 30 images and so on, that, that he would not have to change too much about the thing. Anyway. Uh, hi. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that I will answer the question not the question but what pet was saying is i think that you were talking about the groovy script that fred developed and uh we are currently trying to um like make it work better it's actually a groovy script that you can launch locally on your uh, image and you can uh, get your macro file and it will connect itself on your Omero base you give the id of the project and data set you want to um uh, you want to make the macro run on and it run uh, locally automatically. I don't know if I explained it well, but <laughs> I think I saw I saw that like last week. And uh, you made something about it, or you made a. Uh, we did a, a, on the Omero tips. We actually talked about the, yeah. the Omero tips. Yeah, I, I saw it uh, recently. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I and I, I, I wanted to look into it like. But was uh, I, what I didn't get in the in the thing is how do you set the data back into Omero? Is that something like? Okay, to be honest, I'm not the one doing that. It's oh, okay. actually Fred and his master student who is doing ah. that. Because uh, I I don't mm, know mm. that I'm not super good at um, mm. uh, oh, uh, oh, code la decoding. programming. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But they are uh, working on that and they are trying to make it work better. So it's a work in progress. Yeah, cool. Yes, I was going to mention uh, uh, the, uh, the work uh, of uh, Fred uh, about that. Uh, that's one of the questions is uh, uh, how you manage uh, input outputs uh, with uh, Omiro because um, there is a problem with uh, uh, ROIs, uh, which can be uh, 3D even. As, uh, well, Omero can store them in 3D, but uh, MAJ has a trouble uh, 
with uh, managing that, that kind of uh, stuff, you have the results problem. Uh, well, well, it's um, I think it's a, it, it's not a, a simple. Uh, well, it's a it's a simple question, but I think the answer is not simple uh, uh, to how uh, they, they can manage. But uh, uh, Frederic is actually is uh, indeed working on, on that, and uh, it's. Uh, uh, I think if 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 uh, some um, uh, well uh, norm is defined, uh, it will be uh, it will it will be able to do that. Can I just briefly ask if Fred and Frederick are the same person, and if it's Frederick Bro? Yes, yes, yes it's Frederick okay. Bro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sophie. Actually, I, I was not mentioning uh, uh, Frederick's nice work and yours. Uh, I forgot about that. The, the thing to remark is that you guys have a very nice user interface there which is of course very attractive for Julius users and other users. Whereas the thing I was mentioning is what uh, Jean-Marie wrote, which is uh, yeah, bare bone wire. Uh, you see the, 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 the code uh, to paste into the scripting dialog of Fiji and, and or run a Jupyter notebook environment with that, which is a very different ball game. Um, so they are a few things